there's some guy who's in the show queue. His name is Chungus Stalin. And this guy's talked a lot, a lot of shit about me in the past. I distinctly recall this guy as a huge troll harassing the shit out of me, saying, talking all this shit on Twitter. So we're going to see what they're made of and what they're worth uh, in a debate. And we're going to test their knowledge. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How old are you? Uh, I'm 23 from Scotland. Thank you for having me on. You sound you sound like a very cheerful little chipmunk, but on Twitter you're a little bit uh, aggressive, wouldn't you say so? Oh, definitely. I mean, just when it comes to you specifically. There's but a you few kinda, things you that I do want to touch on. You kind of sound a little like you got sound like a cheerful little chipmunk in the forest. Uh, you know, you kind of sound like a little creature, a little happy, smiling little gerbil. But on Twitter you talk a lot of shit, dude. I, I remember you. You seem like very angry and bitter. So, why are you so angry on Twitter compared to uh, when you uh, use so voice to talk to me i guess i mean i think it'll get there eventually has let's be honest but specifically when it comes to yourself i don't think you understand marxism simply put okay and um, i think you do more to harm the left than help the left um, and there's why a lot couldn't of key you points polite, why couldn't you say that politely why do you have to be so angry about it why does it bother because you so much simply put you're a dumbass and you seem to have well, that, a titan's we'll, we'll self-worth well, well yeah yeah gonna, let's, let's uh, listen this, listen man. i'm glad you came to actually test that whether it's true or not. But how do you know I'm a dumbass? Why are you saying I'm a dumbass? Okay, perfect. I'm glad you got into this. So we could break it down point by point if you want. I think the case that I'm going to present is just simply that you don't understand Marxism. Let's talk about imperialism. You had a stream where someone was talking about imperialism and you'd mentioned that both Genghis Khan was not an imperialist and the Roman Empire was not imperialist and proceeded to say that you take your definition straight from Lenin, correct? Yeah. Remember this, yeah. And, so then, and then you're going to point out that. how Lenin said in a they're sentence. Literally, they're literally the examples that Lenin points out in imperialism that I see. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're referring to. So just, just so we're clear, before we get into this, I'm really glad. I mean, I thought this was, you had something really bad cooking up. So is, is this how you're going to qualify in the relevant sense why I'm a dumbass? This so specific there's point much of more to it. I mean, we can get caught okay, okay, so hypothetically the next 30 speaking, minutes to an hour. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hypothetically speaking, if issue. you're, hold on. Hypothetically speaking, if you are wrong about this, then I, does that make me a dumbass still, or am I still a dumbass if you're wrong about this specific point? On this specific point, I'm not wrong. So okay, wait, wait, but hypothetically, if you're wrong about this there, specific there no point... Hold on, I mean, Chungus, Chungus. If you are wrong about this hypothetically, and we are going to have to get into the philosophy of language too, by the way, but if you're wrong about this hypothetically, I need you to entertain the hypothetical and not dodge it, will you retract the claim that I'm a dumbass? On that one specific point, I mean, no. I wouldn't because I'm, okay, I'm not. Okay. Uh, so, but also, so, it's, it's not, it's so not you're gonna have. To, point I'm point gonna point. have to ask you to um to kind of like put some skin in the game. I want you to actually qualify. What is it gonna take for you to retract the claim that I'm a dumbass? You're not allowing me to present the rest of the argument. I guess so. Imperialism was just one topic upon many. Okay. That I okay. Do want to talk about. How, how many topics? Because um, we we can go through every single one. So after we have exhausted every single topic yep. that you saw fit to bring up in this debate, will you take back the claim that? I'm a dumbass. It's going to be pretty hard to do that, guys. I mean, I, if you can somehow, if you can somehow, if we go, hold on, hypothetically, if we go one by you one, you're not a dumbass. based what? on everything else that you've said in the past, I am going to be absolutely fucking shocked to my bone. Because, mate, you're a fucking idiot. Chungus, that's not... Hold on, hold on. You're, you call, you're calling me an idiot. That's okay. You you sound, hold on, body. that's okay. You sound like a forest fairy. You're calling me an idiot. But are you going to take back the claim that I'm a dumbass if on each and every one of these points you cannot prevail uh, as having the, the rational argumentation? If miraculously you are somehow able to yes. prove that, then I will re retract that claim. But okay, that's all I wanted to hear. That is all I wanted to hear. Okay, so now let's get into Lenin's imperialism. You're fucking wrong. So let's get into Lenin's imperialism. So the famous, now famous pedophile, George Gennaitis, a.k.a. Bad Empanada, is actually the first person to bring this up in the form of like a meme video. Because in Lenin's imperialism, Lenin clearly writes, colonial policy and imperialism existed before the latest stage of capitalism and even before capitalism. Rome, founded on slavery, pursued a colonial policy and practiced imperialism. Now, why am I saying then that I'm drawing my specific definition of imperialism from Lenin's work? All you have to do is consult the very next sentence where Lenin says, but general, and he puts this in quotation marks, disquisitions on imperialism, which ignore or put into the background 
The fundamental difference between socioeconomic formations inevitably turn into the most vapid banality or bragging, like the comparison Greater Rome and Greater Britain. Even the capitalist colonial policy of previous stages of capitalism is essentially different from the colonial policy of finance capital. So what is actually going on here? Let me explain. Lenin is no, addressing... No, 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 well, no, well, you're going to have to let me finish and then I'll let you talk. Okay, fair enough. So, fair so enough. Lenin is essentially here saying that this is what most people mean by imperialism. By, what most people mean by imperialism is you know a, a colonial policy and you know uh, expansionism that's what most people meant at the time but now lenin is saying this is actually wrong this is a part of the general disquisition he's not it's wrong he's saying hold on, hold on. he is hold on he is saying it wrong because throughout the rest of the book lenin will later qualify and give a new unique meaning to the word imperialism that is not the same thing as what existed in oh. ancient rome and which existed in the past therefore if we consult an elementary dialect materialist and not metaphysical understanding of language then the meaning of a word is not going to be some kind of fixed static essence that is transhistorical and exists across time when Lenin developed an analysis of imperialism that he himself claims is unique to the current epoch that necessarily must define the use of that word at least among communists and socialists as referring to that specific epoch. There, it could not possibly have a meaning if it's referring to some trans-historical materialism. When people talk about imperialism, they're talking about Lenin's imperialism. They're not talking so about has, ancient Rome. I mean, so that, that may have been say, the case you, before... Hold on, let me finish. That may have been the case before Lenin's writing of imperialism, but after he writes this, and after the theory of imperialism becomes commonplace among Marxists and among so-called leftists and all that kind of shit, the meaning of the word, at least how Marxists are trying to describe it, is not referring to any general disquisitions, but is referring to the unique epoch of monopoly and finance capital. So what you're saying there isn't too far from what I was going to follow up on. I mean, you're saying essentially that imperialism's character changed, which is a correct analysis to an extent, but that does not disregard what you said previously about the, the Genghis Khan or fucking the, the Roman Empire. Um, they were ultimately still involved in colonial and imperialist practices, which you flat out rejected, regardless of Lenin's definition. And just because the definition of a word changes over time doesn't mean that it still wasn't, you know, involved in these okay. colonial practices. Is, is that um, all? So ultimately, okay. I think I think you were you were just about there. But again, it doesn't disregard what you said previously. Like, yes, you, you can still say, yeah. you know, using the dialectical method, the word changes over time and it means this, it means that. And using Lenin's definition of imperialism is correct to an extent. But what you said about Genghis Khan and the Roman Empire was wrong. Okay, I'm, I'm really glad you decided to go on this road because now we can bring up some quotations by Engel and get into the heat of the difference between dialectical materialism and metaphysics. So I'm now going to accuse you, and I can maintain this okay, consistently. Okay, so two seconds before hold you on, do hold this. On, I hold on. exactly what I I am now going to you accuse you no, of idealism. Seconds, hold on, hold on. Chungus, Chungus. This is what you do, Phil Hatt. Chungus, Chungus. You see, you I let you speak. Like I, I literally let you speak uninterrupted. Now you and have to let me go. As buzzwords that you barely hold understand. Hold on, hold on. You're going to have to stop being such an emotional, you know. Listen, your estrogen levels are through the roof. I let you speak. Speak, Chungus. <laughs> Chungus, I let you speak uninterrupted. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you want to have a debate where I constantly cut you off and interrupt you? Because I'm more than happy to do that. Because, I mean, you do say a lot of stupid fucking shit that I can easily respond to. You, you, what you're saying is very predictable. I know what sentence you're going to say when you say the first word, right? So do you want me to actually allow you your own time to speak? Or do you want to have a debate where I just cut you off and, and whatever? So I, I think you should just let me speak here. And then I'm going to give you your turn. Unless you want this to start getting ugly, Chungus. By the way, don't say I'm the uncertain civil one who just yells over people. I'm giving you a chance to argue. So Chungus, you're claiming that actually imperialism has just changed over time rather than Lenin's imperialism referring to a qualitatively new mode of production that gives a qualitatively new meaning to the word. But that I'm going to accuse you of idealism and metaphysics. You're claiming that because the use of the word, the syllables and the combination of letters, imperialism may have changed over time. By the way, I think the word originates sometime in the 17th or 18th century. You're saying because that has changed over time that the actual thing itself has changed over time like materialism materially has changed over time just because the word people use to describe it has changed over time can you actually demonstrate to me how 
Roman imperialism evolves into the monopoly imperialism that Lenin's talking about. It has to go through so many stages to do that. It has to go through feudalism. It has to go through capitalism. And the qualifier of imperialism to describe the Roman Empire has no materially essential reality at all. The essential reality of Roman imperialism does not actually undergo a development. It is completely annihilated with the emergence of feudalism. Really hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Because the essence of Roman imperialism lied in the slave-based mode of production. So it's not imperialism that's changing, it's the mode of production that's changing. Now, if you want to use the same word to describe these superficial qualitative characteristics of expansionism, that's fine. But the essence is not actually expansionism. It's not expansionism that undergoes material qualitative change and development. It's the underlying mode of production that actually conditions the possibility of that expansionism in the first place. And moreover, Lenin does not even mean by monopoly capitalism, expansionism. He doesn't mean anything qualitatively comparable to Roman imperialism, as you're trying to call it. And he admits as much. I mean, there's no comparison between the two because it has nothing to do with some evolution of expansionism or some evolution of a general colonial policy. Lenin is talking about a specific evolution of industrial capitalism. So nothing that you've just said there is different to really what I was pointing out, in all honesty. It's very different. Um, is it, though? So, yeah, you're correct in saying... The mode of yes, because you're saying, the, you're saying imperialism has just changed rather than the use of the word. It wasn't probably the right choice of words on my part, Okay, in all so honesty. what are you saying? However, what I'm saying is I'm stoned. Um, Wait, so now you're making excuses that you're stoned no, and that... I mean, I am, actually, but yeah. Oh, so, so if you lose this debate, it was because you're stoned. I'm not, no, it's not and, and that's so, it, right? That's what you're saying. Um, in fact, if we want to take Lenin's definition of the word under capitalism, where obviously the highest stage dictates that imperialism forms, we can look at China as a perfect example, which you love to obviously Hold on, bring are you up pivoting and, to a new yeah. argument now? Are we going to talk it's about... Not, it's not pivoting. I mean, we can talk wait, about... Because, no, 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 wait, wait, Chungus, Chungus. I will, fact, I will, I will gladly... Hold on, I will gladly... I will gladly debate you on whether Russia and China are imperialist, but first we have to get over this specific point of contention. You claim I'm a dumb fuck, and you use this to illustrate this as an example, because I said that the Mongol Empire and the Roman Empire were not imperialist. Knowing that I was using imperialism in the same sense that Lenin used it, because in that actual debate, if you actually evaluate the context, well, I'm, talk I'm talking about attempts. Hold on, perhaps. shut the fuck up. I'm talking about attempts to compare American imperialism to those things. Well, no, those things are not imperialism, at least in the sense in which that word is used now among Marxists. Now, am I saying that universally since the 17th century, the word imperialism has only been used in one way? No, but then again, that's not how language works in the first place. If you, for example, say, oh yeah, that dog is not a cat. I mean, you're not accounting for whether in like the Middle Ages people called dogs cats and use the word cat. You're actually um, attaching a specific meaning to that word that you're having enough good faith to qualify that people will somehow understand. And then you're describing a dog as a dog and a cat as a cat. So if you have a dialectical and materialist understanding of language, then the, the meaning is actually primary. Now you may try to say that, Oh, not enough people are familiar with Lenin's imperialism. But if you're debating me on Marxism and, and on American imperialism, and I'm trying to point out there's a qualitative difference between the word imperialism as we're using it and, you know, the Mongol Empire or the Roman Empire, uh, you can't really say you're a materialist and not an idealist and a metaphysician and say, oh, that's not true because uh, Lenin claimed that uh, Rome had imperialism. Well, you're taking Lenin's words out of context. Plain and simple. I guess that's not what you were saying at the time, though, has. I mean, it's ridiculous to say that if you're looking at the Roman Empire and saying it's not imperialist because, obviously, it didn't have a capitalist mode of production, that, that's obviously the case, mate, if you're looking at it from a case of capitalism and the natural progression into imperialism. No, if you're looking at it in the sense of how the word imperialism is used by Marxists, I mean, almost universally. But it's, it's still ridiculous. It, Why it's is still it ridiculous? It's still an example that Lenin pointed to. Although it's not the imperialism that we see under capitalism, where, you know, but, armies but are going on. up to Why is the it, land. You're saying it has the same that. essence, then. Not the same essence. You're saying I mean, it's not the imperialism. To, no, it's, it's, you're saying it's not... It's you're you're trying to say it's not the same... Hold on. You're, you're trying to say I mean, it's it's not the same type of imperialism, right? To an extent. Okay, but, so if you're, if you're saying it's but, not the same no, type of imperialism, you're then you're trying to imply... Hold on, Chungus, Chungus, if, if all you're saying is it's not the same type of imperialism, you're trying to imply they belong to the same genus, 
share some kind of common essence and that they're just different types rather than words that are used to describe entirely and qualitatively different things. Lenin said, again, even the previous colonial policy of capitalism is essentially, he said, essentially different from the colonial policy of finance capital. If the essence of the word is different, You're saying how, this is, this is if the essence of the to. word is different from how it was used before, the words no longer share an essential genus. They are not different species of the same essence. They are qualitatively different things. If you want to go down the character of the, the road, rather of looking at Lenin's imperialism and actual seeing it under capitalism, I think getting started on China would probably be a good place to start. And today's China. Honest. Hold on, so Chung is um, just so we're clear. I am. I'm going to pursue this with you as well. But just so we're clear, you have conceded on the original topic of anything, contention. Why think, have you not it be, conceded? It would, be fair, it would be fair to just demonstrate that you don't understand Marxism and imperialism if we were to go over China. But we, no, no, because... hold on. But you just brought up one bullet point of contention, which was about what Lenin said about ancient Rome. Now and you want to move on to today's made, China. I still think you're moving the goalposts. Chungus, like, Chungus, I'm saying, not is, moving the goalposts. I asked you if you were wrong about this. Chungus, mode of production. Chungus, so you're not conceding on this one point that you initially brought up. Because until you concede on it, we're not moving on to the next one. Because I'm not conceding on it. I don't know what else I can say except for what I've already said. Well, if you you're don't know, hold on, you're Chungus, doing Chungus, hold on, Chungus, Chungus. Okay, Chungus, I have to explain to you the basics of... Chungus, I have to explain to you the basics of debate then. If you don't know what else to say, you're admitting you don't know how to respond to my argument. If you don't know how to respond to my argument, you are at the very least not informed enough to come to a conclusion about what my actual position is, ergo, using that as an example to say I'm a dumbass I think the is untenable. You don't want to get caught in China is because you know fine well that you're fucked, man. No, like, Chungus, I will, no, I will, no. if, if Chungus, I will, will not only serious, debate you with Chungus, 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 Chungus calm that, down, like, Chungus, calm down. I will not only debate you with regard to China, I will also debate you with regard to Russia, which should actually be easier for you because Russia is officially not a socialist country at all. So I will do both of those things but i don't want you to pivot from this original bullet point because my goal chung is is to demonstrate my every hold on, chung is, chung is, chung is, chung is, we're not going to play this game where you bring up a bullet point pivot to something else without the question of whether i succeeded in proving you wrong on this one bullet point is not settled I want you every single bullet. Wrong. I, and this Chungus, is what your I am after. monkey brain does, mate. You, you get caught up on something and you seem to think you've just... Chungus, you, you, but you, you are... The, Chungus, Chungus, if you recall... You hold on, Chungus, if you recall... Man. Hold on, if you recall in the beginning of the debate... You did about the fucking Ch Chungus, Chungus by you're, you're, you're muling and, you're muling and whining and crying. Please go get some tissues. You're muling and whining and crying. Listen, Chungus, in the beginning of this debate, I asked you... Hold on, hold on, Chungus, Chungus. I asked you... Hey, if you're wrong about this specific point about ancient Roman stuff, uh, will you admit? You said, no, there's other things. I said, okay, we'll do it one by one. So this is one of the bullet points that I have to conquer in order to actually ultimately exact your final surrender where you're going to admit that I am actually not a dumbass and you cannot sustain that claim. So that's why I'm focusing on this one point because you're the one who brought it up. Now, you want to pivot to something else in an entirely new debate about whether contemporary China, which is actually after Lenin wrote imperialism, not before, is imperialist. I am more than happy to go down that road with you. But first, we have to resolve this specific point of contention. You're doing your monkey brain bit, man. This is exactly what you do. You just, you, you don't even give the people the opportunity to talk about anything else because you get caught on one specific Wait, but point Chungus, you think that Chungus, you've won an argument, which is fucking ridiculous. Chungus, so let's you say did. I go down the road with you on China and every everything That's else. On, hold on, just let me speak. Let's say I just decide to pivot with you and go on the road of China. By the end of our debate, it will be impossible for me to um, exact your concession because you're going to say, well, I didn't concede on the imperialism ancient Rome thing. So, so I actually that's don't That's not at that. all what's going to happen, man. That's well, not well, at all can, can, I, can, you, can you at least admit that you were wrong on that point with regard to ancient Rome? I'm still not wrong. I mean, Why like, not? ultimately, yeah. fucking, what you were saying at the time when it came to ancient Rome not being imperialist was still totally out with the fucking comprehension of Rome ever being a capitalist society. Like, it's not a capitalist society. Well, what do you mean? So why what do you mean? Are you trying to tie Lenin's definition of imperialism to a fucking system that came before capitalism? 
But that's what other people were trying to do when they were talking about the Mongols in ancient Rome. If you want to just say they were expansionist, I never objected to that. But calling them imperialism dilutes the qualitative difference between Lenin's writing imperialism the highest stage of capitalism and what he was describing there and just some mere expansionism. It's a form of establishing a general disquisition that Lenin explicitly rejected. And of course, he's going to refer to Rome as imperialist before he gets into the nitty gritty of his own writing, because that's how the word was used in the commonplace back then. That is obviously not the case anymore. Imperialism is widely regarded as a specific stage of so-called late capitalism today, even by non-Marxists. And it's untenable to, to, to say that, oh, actually Lenin claimed in the because in the introduction to the work that Rome was imperialist. No, he didn't. He didn't even flesh out what he meant by imperialism by that time. And he literally qualified that sentence by saying, and we actually should not establish these general disquisitions that I just referred to. He's basically saying, yeah, and everyone says Rome is imperialist and practiced a colonial policy, but actually what they're referring to is essentially different from what I'm referring to. So therefore, they're not part of the same genus. They are not species of the same genus. They're qualitatively different things. They're not different types of the same thing because the same thing in question isn't based on some platonic ideal that is trans-historical. It's based on definite concrete modes of production. So again, we have to establish why I'm wrong about this specific point. The thing is, though, I mean, what you just said there, specifically there, I wouldn't disagree with. Okay, well, so you're conceding that you were wrong. That's not that's not me conceding. Listen, you have I'm a lot saying. of other... Hold on, Chungus, you have a lot of other points to win on, but you have to at least admit you lost on this one. I'd say... Maybe you'll win on the China you one. You might, you might win on the China-Russia one, but this, the debate is not going to be judged until the whole thing's over. But at the very least, you have to admit that you, you were wrong about this one point. You still have a lot Let's of chances. Move on. I agree, man. You acknowledge that you're wrong? I think, again, with the context in which you were saying it, it was very easy for someone to take exactly what was said. Right, so you can, you can admit, you, you admit you misjudged and you were wrong. Is that fair? I'd say that what you discussed when it came to... Let's just let's get straight recently. forward so you can move on to the next thing. Again, there's a lot of other things we have okay, to get man, on you go. Okay, so you admit that you were wrong? Yeah, let's do that. Oh, that's a yes, right? That's... Aye, fuck it, man. On you go. That's a yes, right? So... The next thing I want to talk about... Hold on, Chungus, Chungus, that is that a yes or a no? Because we cannot proceed until we, we come to a conclusion about this one, because I don't want to come back to it. Was that a yes or a no? Aye, mate. Oh, aye. Just move on. Is that a yes or a no, Chungus? Can you not understand what I means, mate? Chungus, were you wrong about this initial thing? If you're not conceding on it, then we're going to continue to pursue it. So were you wrong or not? Yes. Okay, that's all I want. Thank you for having the bravery to admit that. So now you want to talk about China. So have at it. So it's you obviously seem to think that the Belt and Road Initiative itself is not an imperialist conquest itself, no? No, I don't think it's imperialist at all. And you think you see that the rise of China is obviously a good thing in terms of you know overthrowing the U.S. or at least you know counteracting U.S. hegemony, yeah? Yes. Well, the benefits of the Belt and Road Initiative. Although they might seem, you know, good in theory, it still economically ties these countries to China in such to such an extent that they're reliant on China. And the only real benefits of the Belt and Road Initiative are the children of the Corporate bourgeoisie in the countries in which they're they're obviously invested in. So a good case study that I like to point to is Liberia. I spent quite a lot of time living in Liberia, um, which is a former US, US colony in the west coast of Africa. They have recently had quite a lot of Chinese investment where the Chinese built a road through Liberia, basically connected the capital to, you know, key towns within the within the country. Um, they built quite a lot of offices and quite a lot of developments. And in exchange for these roads and the, the offices that they built, they almost have near exclusive mining rights in China to basically take as much as they want while employing some of the local population. Now, one thing that I did notice when I was in Liberia is that school fees are extortionate. The vast majority of the working class in that country cannot afford to go to school. Even the main university in Monrovia is way out of reach for the average proletarian. The only people that manage to get into these schools, assuming they're not given, you know, grants or scholarships, which are very rare to, to happen, are the people that are benefiting from the, the Chinese loans that are coming into the country, the children of the Confidor bourgeoisie. And what happens is these people go through school um, and they end up working for Chinese companies we're working for, I mean, I, I keep, I, I bring up China. America is also heavily involved in Liberia. I'm not well, we're focusing on China, right? 
But we are exactly yeah. yeah. And the the benefits aren't seen by the people. Like yeah, they built a road, but what happens? You still have people that are working twelve hour days. The children getting sent off to work twelve hour days, yeah. working in fucking wood shops, this that. So and again, what you're seeing is yeah. the Belt and Road Initiative tying these countries to China, and making them more dependent on them. It might be a little bit right. better than obviously American hegemony, but ultimately you're choosing sides in an imperialist okay, fucking. Sure. I just have a few questions. So dividend. Yeah. So you consider yourself like a, a Marxist Leninist Maoist, so you uphold Stalin, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, just just so we're clear. All right. So um, you talk about dependency as being a feature of imperialism. Now, Lenin, at the time of the October Revolution, um, did he foresee or, or expect a world revolution of the international proletariat? That's a Trotskyist idea, mate. Well, isn't that what they all expected? At, at, at least in the October Revolution, there's gonna, it's going to break out in Europe and there's a big chance for a world revolution now? Well, they certainly thought that at the times, but yeah. again... Yeah. Okay, okay, just, yeah. just so we got that clear. Hypothetically, that's what Lenin believed. That's what everyone at the time believed. If there was a world revolution at that time, and if you don't like this example, we can move on to the Stalin era. Are there still inequalities in development between the colonial countries and Europe and, and even the Soviet Union? Why are we getting caught up in hypotheticals, though? Like, okay, the, let's, I, not do not hypothetical. Fucking, let's not do a hypothetical. Let's not do a hypothetical. Are there, were really there, let's do something even better. Space. Let's do a concrete historical example. Were there inequalities in terms of development between the Russian Soviet Republic and the colonies acquired by the Russian Empire in Central Asia? Were there developmental well, inequalities there? Obviously. Okay. So did those developmental inequalities entail a difference in the standard of living between people living in uh, former colonies and in the Russian imperial core, quote unquote? As did capitalism. Okay, like, sure. Capitalism but, but, but you don't think the Soviet Union was imperialist. Like, what, you don't, what's the point you're hold trying on, to get But to? you don't think the Soviet Union was imperialist, do you? <laughs> well, what, what year are we talking about? Specifically before Stalin? Or no, this was this didn't this actually um, exaggerated under Stalin, and that the inequality never disappeared until the dissolution. I mean, even after the dissolution, but throughout the entirety of the Soviet Union's existence, this inequality between the core and the peripheries actually never was overcome. Yes, and. Okay, well, I just wanted, wanted to ask you, is that imperialism? Well, considering that Cuba was almost certainly a sugar colony of the USSR at the time, that, that was an imperialism. No, no, I'm just talking about... Like, yeah, you from the Lenin, national appropriation. Forget about... I know, that, I know the Soviet social imperialism, but Lenin and Stalin, is the, is, the, is the Soviet Union imperialist under them? No, they came up with fucking like, the national question in terms of when it came to when yeah. to support national liberation movements, when to basically take them on board, yeah, and when to reject them. I don't know what the point that you're trying to get to still has. The point, well, that would be even worse in the case of China, though, because China does not politically interfere in the affairs of any African country, right? We're just talking about developmental inequalities that would be inevitable, even in a hypothetically post-capitalist world. Well, again, I mean, the, the goalpost that I was talking, or that I set, was that you think that China is not engaged in imperialism. Okay, hold on, fly, fly. We're not you shifting the goalposts. I think the, the kicker here, the, the ultimate, I, I think, I think on, the ultimate to point I want to get to, Chungus, is Chungus, to say that the, Chungus, the ultimate point I want to get to here the Americans. is that because of those developmental inequalities, relations of dependence are also inevitable, even in a post-capitalist context. So it's not specifically, surely it's not specifically the relations of dependence alone that make China imperialist in, in Liberia or anywhere else, is it? It's the export of finance capital, my friend. Like, literally, they're right, giving out but loans. It, it kind of and, seems and like in China... In exchange for these loans, it, they get you know, high inflation rates, so they, they'll, they will need to pay it back. You know, you can say that China writes off loans, but they, the majority they don't. They've taken control of some ports in other countries in Africa um, because they defaulted on loans. Um, but China's... So the, the but character you just, that China is currently involved in okay. is imperialist. Okay, okay. so let's talk about the export of finance capital then, because that's something more concrete that I can work with, right? Um, it kind of seems like there's some gaps in your knowledge about China's economic system and, and its Belt and Road Initiative. China's not actually exporting finance capital. It's exporting, if anything, a form of infrastructural capital, which is based on concrete infrastructure and industry. And actually, it does these things at a loss while in debt. It actually gets into debt through infrastructure. And then the infrastructure pays for itself. It pays for the debt. That's been China's model. But in the case of them exporting finance capital, that would be a completely different model. That would be people taking out loans that are unrepayable, right? And in, in order for it to be a form of finance capital, like in the case of the IMF and the World Bank, you would actually have a scenario in which 
that loan based on interest just continues to accumulate like they would accumulate capital just from the interest on the loans right that would be a form of finance capital but that is not china's model of, of exporting uh so-called capital what right? you're trying to say is that because china is building infrastructure instead of giving out loans it's not imperialism which is okay. well, i'm, I'm Wait, saying china's say china's model of development whether internally so or abroad is not based on profit at all to begin with profit is just an ancillary measurement uh, of whether it's it's efficient or successful or not but ultimately it's not based on profit it's based on concrete goals such as building infrastructure so it's it's not based on profit which is why um china took control of kenya's largest ship import because they couldn't afford to repay the loan their largest what the largest like ship import like their so main i i cannot import. um fact check your claim about the kenyan Ye shipping port i mean people okay. have claimed this Take people, your time. Have, Take people your time. have tried to claim this about sri lanka and it turned out to be a complete fraud so just for the purposes of argumentation i guess i'll concede it to you i mean just because i can't i'll concede to you that 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 fact can be upheld that the china has seized kenya's shipping port and it's just like that with no further context why would China's that also been exporting sweatshops essentially to countries such like such as Ethiopia, where they can actually get a cheaper workforce okay. to produce so the same goods for them, in which they can then export and sell on. Yeah. So yeah, again, yeah. that's that is that in itself is financial. Hold on. Capital, Does Ethiopia have ending. sweatshops because of Chinese imperialism or because of Ethiopia's level of development? Well, imperialism is a massive factor in it, mate. Are you One, trying to say that if a country is basically underdeveloped, then imperialism is okay to be excused? Because no, obviously no, because that's, as Nkrumah, felt. hold on, as Nkrumah pointed out, neocolonialism, which he thought thought was qualitatively a next step from imperialism, is actually about underdeveloping countries. So if a country's underdeveloped and there's concrete economic relations being established that actually do successfully develop that country, according to Nkrumah, that would actually be beyond the bounds of, of imperialism as we know it, at least in the third world. Or maybe the Marshall Plan or something, you can make the case that oh, there's that a development. That also doesn't make much sense. So when you're talking about underdevelopment, I think you're talking about underdevelopment. You seem to think that when people mention underdevelopment, you're talking about that in an isolated case in that country, that that country itself needs to be underdeveloped. Or no, it needs I, to you know be constantly is? regressing as you, a consequence of imperialism. Do you know what underdevelopment but, is? Uh, well, that's what I was going to come to, if you just give me yeah. a chance there. I was about to say that underdevelopment is still tied to the country that is ultimately exploiting said yeah, underdeveloped but you, you, Hold on, you know underdevelopment. underdeveloped as, say, the US, for example. As long wait, as wait, just to be clear. US, under, underdeveloped and lesser developed are not the same thing. Underdevelopment... Well, Refers to the look at, just, look at what happened when it came to on, I, just want, I want to be clear that we're talking like about the same thing. Yeah, I want to be clear we're talking about the same thing. So underdevelopment refers to the active way which the export of finance capital not only prevents uh, the the countries in the periphery that prevents their development, but actually stunts their development even in a backward direction through devastation. So underdevelopment is not just countries being lesser developed. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what what argument are you making? I was basically saying that. I think you're looking at it in a in a vacuum. By the way, I, I'm being told that the Kenyan port is not actually a collateral. Can you comment on that? Or uh, you're the one that brought it up. Where's the source? I'm just being told that. I mean, is it collateral or not? Or not? This is the thing you do, mate. You just push it out your arse and fucking. All take right. Well, it as well the, the the maritime executive right here is saying, "Report: the port of Mombasa is not collateral for Kenya's China Kenya's uh, Chinese loans." And it says in December 2018, it came with a warning that Kenya allegedly staked its valuable Mombasa port as a collateral for the 3.6 billion loan from China. The revelation was serious, so this seems like an accusation. Although they both denied that the Mombasa support was used collateral, the exact loans have remained an enigma. The rumor has continued to circulate. A new report released last week by the China Africa Research Initiative, the John Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies, shows that the Auditor General erred in concluding Mombasa support was used as the loan collateral. To our surprise, our team found that the collateral rumor stemmed from a seemingly tiny but critically misreading uh, by the Auditor General. The AG mistakenly labeled the KPA as a borrower, responsible for repaying SGR loans. For context, four stakeholders were involved in SGR financing. Kenya's National Treasury, the borrower, KRC, project company, KPA, the main project customer and owner of Mombasa Port, and China's Exim Bank, the lender. Under the terms of the contract, KPA agreed to be SGR's major client. Not the borrower and not the collateral. So it seems like you were completely mistaken in making that claim. I, I suspected as much because similar claims were made about the Sri Lankan 
support and then it was a google search away to show this was completely bunk so we have to be clear about the facts when we're bringing up facts right that we can't ready at end uh debunk so this is not a tenable example of chinese imperialism because it's an outright lie do you still recognize that China? You obviously recognize that China is not socialist in and of itself right now, yeah? No, I do recognize that. And China it's got a socialist. capitalist mode of production, yeah? No, I, I reject that view. What do you reject about it? Like, how is the Chinese system quantitatively different to actual capitalists? I think the most decisive, it's, it's, it's a combination of many things. It's not one thing. It's a combination of all land being owned publicly within China. And that's just an unconditional thing. Well, that's it's not the case considering it's still built. It's, it's a combination of the unique role of the um, state-owned companies. It's a combination of China's developmental model based on infrastructure, not based on profit. The state-owned companies that still have massive, like, still turn massive profits that have fucking billionaire shareholders. But um, they don't turn profit to make profit. They turn profit for purposes of development. So is profits are not in demand. Like in their pockets with billions. So I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you what this means, right? Development. If if the choice, as far as China's government is concerned, is between profit and development, they always choose development. They will neglect. Well, it's funny you also say that because there's also been studies that have come out to show that um, China right now would develop faster using Mao era policies as opposed to what. I, that even right if now. even if that's true i've heard similar things i'd have to look at the actual report but that doesn't decide whether china is socialist or not and then also you're kind of pivoting from the um the imperialism thing so well no no i'm not pivoting from that because the, the the key point i want to come to is it's still a capitalist system and it still dictates like it still necessitates imperialism to survive okay but um, th but it's, if we actually analyze how china's system works it is an untenable claim because China's system is not based on the export of capital. It's based on the development of the forces of production in which, you know, things like profit and things like the use of money are just caught in the wheels of that, caught in the gears of that as as ancillary and incidental measurements rather than ends in and of themselves. You just said a big word salad there, mate. But again, OK, I'll, I'll actually make your skillet. argument easier, right? To make your argument easier would probably be like, even if you tried to claim China was socialist, I'm speaking for you, like, even if Yuhas tried to claim that China was socialist, aren't these African countries capitalist? So isn't China's economic relationships with these countries necessarily um, China being bounded up with the capitalist mode of production? And to that, I would respond that no, because what China's actually been doing is swallowing up the capitalist mode of production, sublating it into a higher mode of production. And that is why China has been the number one, you know, engine of economic growth since 2008. And it is also refashioning and changing the world and the, uh, the, the global mode of production itself, such that all of the capitalist countries with their central base being in London still and Wall Street, that is entering into a crisis, uh, which it doesn't look like it's going to be able to bail itself out from, except through war with China. When it's when you're talking about China right now, yeah, when you're talking about China and imperialism, it's ridiculous still to say that the, the reason why China is doing this right now is because they're bound to the world capitalist system. Ultimately, the Soviet Union and Mao's China. That's it, not what I said. It was in, in a roundabout way. So you said that because they're capitalist economy. No, no, no I tried to make an argument for you and then I responded to the argument. I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying China, China, I'm not saying China uh, is capitalist because it has to be or something. I'm saying... China is literally transforming the mode of production on a global level, the underlying mode of production. The underlying engine of economic growth is being changed. It isn't so. What they're okay. doing is still facilitating capitalism, is still facilitating imperialism. How is that rocking the world? So, oh, so two like, things. Yeah, it we'll, might be taken away sure. from US hegemony, but again, it's I'll, not... I'll we're explain. Not I'll, I'll explain just fine. So, so two things, right? Is capitalism a global system? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Would you say that in 2008, the global capitalist system kind of suffered a, um, a crisis? Well, obviously, it's built into the system. Okay. They have boom and bust cycles. Like we're Would you? Okay, out. sure, sure. Just these are yes or no questions, and then you're gonna, you can get into the discussion. So would you admit, and this is verifiably provable, that the engine of world economic growth since 2008 has come from China? No, I would not say that. No. Oh, okay. Like, we're, yeah, we're, you, can, you can say that China driving certainly economic growth, certainly if not China. Up. Why Why are you getting so caught up in economic growth again? We're, we're looking at capitalist countries, but... Well, I, like, I'll explain to you what... Because you're saying I don't know about Marxism, but it's kind of curious that you don't know that for Marx, a mode of production is literally how an economy 
reproduces itself and grows. Okay. You're saying that as if I don't understand this, though. Yes. Yeah, but so that's, that's why right, I'm talking about you can. That's why I'm talking about you can grow systems, man. Okay. Like I'm ultimately, what you should be, what you should be using your platform for is to advocate for the actual overthrow of these systems Chungus, instead of looking Chungus, at China Chungus. just Chungus. open by twenty fifty. We're just going to flip the switch and fucking I, abolish. I have a simple years, question for you, and I'm going to ask it again. So you reject the view that China was responsible for the global economic growth after 2008, and more or less. The system collapsed in the United States, as far as the U.S. is concerned. But the reason the U.S. and European economies have been, remained afloat is because of China's economic growth, which has been admitted as much by the U.S. government and by U.S. economists, which is basically that China bailed out the world after 2008. Would you disagree with that? In all honesty, we didn't know enough specifically about after 2008 to properly be able to okay. comment on it. Uh, would you, would you, willing, right would you be willing to concede that to me for the purposes of argumentation? For the purposes of argumentation, because I haven't seen Yeah, yeah, like, like let's just topic. assume that we'll, that's we'll, true, we'll right? Concede that. We'll, just, yeah. we'll just pass over that. Yeah, yeah. Assuming that's true, okay, then wouldn't that mean uh, that... Dave, none of this is relevant to socialism. Or well, I'm, I'm going to explain why it's relevant. I'm going to explain why it's relevant. Wouldn't that at the very least establish that somehow China um, has an economy that is not attached to the global economy and global capitalism in the way that other countries are? I'd say that they, they do a better job of capitalism. But again, why are we but getting didn't caught you say capitalism capital? was a global system? It is. Okay, so if capitalism is a global system, why didn't China go down with the capitalist crisis? They were affected as well, though. Sorry? Like, maybe not maybe not as badly, but they were definitely still impacted by 2008. After 2008, China's economy has only skyrocketed in growth. It, it had no... After 2008, yes. It still took a hit in 2008. And, and by like the way, that is real economic system. growth. It's not based on credit or printing money or anything like that. It's real substantive economic growth. They grew you, a Which lot. we just said that they give out loans at a deficit and X, Y, and Z. In internally, what I'm trying to say is that they will just build infrastructure even if they can't afford it and they can't turn a profit and you know it's not a debt that can be turned into a form of capital first and foremost because the central bank in china is controlled by the communist party which is by the way even russia doesn't have that so that is like a really big ringer right as far as a characteristic and feature of china's socialism or at least its disattachment from the global capitalist system so it builds infrastructure it does not turn finance capital into a doesn't turn finance uh, into a form of capital as a driving force of its mode of production. That's just all ancillary to the ultimate goal of development. Infrastructure is when socialism. That is not what I said. Plenty of capitalist countries also build infrastructure, but they do not make the building of infrastructure the basis of their mode of production. Uh, to Again, the point where so there's specifically some... something that I am familiar with. If, if we do go time back to Liberia example. Like the mining rates in exchange for roads, that is obviously somewhere where they're going to be able to get a profit. Yeah, but like, even even in, even hold that, on, even in a post-capitalist world, there are going to be developmental inequalities and relationships defined by some countries. You're, you're making an excuse for imperialism in the most no, 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 I'm, sense. No, I'm that. not. No, I'm like, not. Because China is merely establishing an equal economic partnership and relationship with other countries. And I'll explain to you why that's not imperialism, even in the colloquial sense. It is not using political pressure in order to coerce these countries into agreeing with China. Is not even using economic forms of blackmail to do so. It is unlike the IMF and unlike the World Bank attaching zero political qualifications to its deals. It also doesn't entrap these countries into vicious cycles of debt because its goal isn't actually the um, gaining of profit through finance capital in the first place. It absolutely does not coerce these countries because of their economic underdevelopment to enter into unfair deals with China. China is very attuned to the developmental needs of other countries, and its goal is to promote win-win development, where China has needs for raw materials, and these countries have needs for basic infrastructure. Now, why can't China and these other countries make economic agreements? I mean, wouldn't that have to happen in socialism as well? Some socialist economies would be more developed, right, because of where they're starting off, they need different things. Kenya right now, or these African countries, they don't necessarily need those raw materials. They need them to sell, yeah, but they don't need them for manufacturing or anything like that yet. But China is actually getting them to a point where they eventually will. So, and then the more technology increases, the more the exploitation of resources, both within China and throughout the world, will be more efficient and, you know, will produce more. There'll be more abundance for everyone. It's not a zero-sum game like the Malthusians say, 
where China's stealing their resources that they would otherwise use to produce their own manufacturing base. It's not that's that that is not how economic development. Ah, yeah, but you know the the British were exporting industry and infrastructure, and of course they were wealthy enough to not need the the profits from that, were they? Um, Sorry, can you uh, repeat that? I I didn't hear. So what you're saying about China right now with win-win development, quote unquote, your words, the the British did the exact same thing. They they built infrastructure in the country that they were colonizing, and what they did was they just the British. You said the British resources. So the British. Yeah. Okay. So I'll explain to you two things, right? So there's two phases of colonial policy that Lenin describes. The early one was based on political dominance and exploitation, and, and it's that those are political colonies. So those countries have no sovereignty, and Britain just steals everything. Now you can say that well, Britain is still building them railroads and shit. Well, Britain's only building infrastructure to the extent that Britain is benefiting from that infrastructure. Is not engaging in China. Absolutely not true. But, China. No, no that, that is. Right? No, I mean, it's not. No, it's not. The, the main roads that, that connects the country, which we goes from Monrovia all the way up to Ghana, Guinea, which we just go straight through the middle of the country, totally That's ignores not true. all but, rural but communities. But China it is makes it ignores deal- all rural communities. Go That's not true. China, China makes deals. It. China makes deals to ensure that these other these countries actually themselves benefit for their own internal development from that infrastructure. Britain did not. Britain did but, not. But, the only people benefiting from this infrastructure again is the Comprador bourgeoisie. Like they're the only ones that yeah, can't yeah, I mean, I mean, be able to you're, go to you're, you're school saying, and then work in the offices that are being built. That okay, then work why, why, why is only why is, back to okay, why is only the Comprador bourgeoisie benefiting? When you have like a working class, obviously in Liberia that is living on less than what a dollar, two dollars a day. Well, um, well, before, well, I have to cut you off there. Does that reflect their developmental status and state? Because in China they were living off a dollar or two. You know, 20 years ago as well, okay? But yes, yes. So the reason why the Comprador bourgeoisie are the ones benefiting is because they're the ones with the money that can send their children to school. Like, it's sorry, still sorry, within their interest to make I, I didn't, sure... I didn't quite catch all that, but I just want to repeat it back to you and just confirm yes or no. You're saying the Comprador bourgeoisie benefits because they have a better standard of living in, in the immediate sense. They have more capital at their disposal where they can then afford to send their kids to, you know, prestigious and... Okay, the so they have a better standard of living. In the country. Is that what you're saying? To then, obviously. Okay, yeah. so they have a better standard. Okay, they have a- they sell themselves out okay. to, to So actually, actually, having a better standard of living is actually not enough to define a class. So when you're saying they are exclusively benefiting, all that tells us is that in the immediate sense, yeah, the people who are already- I know, am talking specifically about a class. I've, I've mentioned specifically the Comprador bourgeoisie. They are the ones that are running the country. They are the ones that are benefiting from this imperialism. Okay, but even in China's- What's inter- your donkey brain okay. not understanding? So this, this is what's a little bit ridiculous. This is what's a little bit ridiculous about what you're saying. China had internal inequalities during its era of development. Now, if you were to say 20, 30 years ago that China's development only benefits- the Comprador bourgeoisie, quote unquote. I mean, in the immediate sense, it might seem that way, right? But then 20 years later, you see the huge rise of a Chinese middle class and a huge poverty alleviation campaign where actually the whole of the Chinese be- nation was benefiting from this, it turned out. And that actually, this is actually the reason why China's doing these deals with Africa and the rest is because of the needs of this new wealthy, you know, Chinese middle class. It is way more well off than it was 20, 30 years ago. So how are you so sure that the only people benefiting from this are the people who seem to be benefiting only in the immediate sense. How do you know what's actually going on to project into the future, like whether or not, you know, the people I, that are I've making one to two dollars now and might be more I wealthy like in the future? Here's something up for the people that are confused. The Comprador bourgeoisie is not the class that exists within the imperialist country. It's the class that exists within the country that's being imperialized. Okay, okay, okay. Bourgeoisie so, in so that Chungus, country. Chungus, we are talking about China before it's an imperialist, quote unquote, adventures in Africa, right? Not right now. Right no, nice, but I, I was, I was, I was. When I was talking about China 20, 30 years ago, that is not the same China today. You're calling China imperialist today because it has a huge middle class, which has more developmental I, I needs. I, I, when did I ever say that? When did I ever say that China has a massive middle class and that's the reason for the development? Like, well, no, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, no I'm, I'm attributing to you. Has. Hold on, Chungus, Chungus, I'm attributing to you the cause, that cause, not because it's what you think yourself, because it's it's like that's what I'm saying is the cause. Like China's doing all these deals in Africa and stuff because of the rising demands of its middle class, its need for more light industry and more domestic consumption, which is why it needs all these raw materials and shit. That's what I was talking about. I was I wasn't saying that you were talking about the middle class. I was pointing out that is actually the reason China is now 
having this Belt and Road Initiative, or at least one of the primary reasons, is because it has entered into a qualitatively new developmental stage. Do you believe there is a middle class in China? Do you not? What do you think constitutes class? I I'm using this is in it, a colloquial... Is it, is it simply oh, money? I'm, I'm, is it I'm simply using, the amount of money that you have at your disposal? Chungus, I am using this in a colloquial sense. I'm referring to... Let's just say, if you don't like that word, I'm referring to the fact people are more wealthy now and they're not like how they were and, and how people are in Liberia now where they're living off of one to two dollars a day like they were, you know. Middle class isn't even a word that should leave a Marxist mouth, you dumb fuck. Chungus, you're getting a little emotional because you're a forest fairy. It's not emotional. Ireland. Chungus, Chungus, you call me a dumb fuck. I think you may you be. Are. Hold on, Chungus. What you do? So Wait, I'm not, I'm not going to insult you right now. Chungus, Chungus. Like, I'm not going to insult you right now. I just want to ask you a question. Chungus, are you autistic? Just a question. No. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because it's very common among autistic people to not understand that words can be given meaning in a colloquial sense. You don't have to read too much into it. That what people mean by middle class isn't some affront to Marxist theory, but just the vague fact, you know, that there's a new stratum of people who are more wealthy than before that are consumers now, not just toilers working one to two, one to two dollars a day like they were 10 to 20 years ago. So you're saying the very fact that I used the commonsensical word middle class, which is not, you know, it's, I'm not saying that's some scientific phrase to describe a class in the Marxist sense, but it is a definite kind of tendency and phenomenon within, within a society where, it, you know, it gets more wealthy and it's able to actually become consumers, right, who are not primarily defined by, you know, sweatshops and working one, two dollars a day, but are primarily kind of defined by also having their own... Do you think that the majority of the Chinese people, even right now, have a better quality of life than they did, say, 20, 30 years ago on the right? Oh, Without well, a doubt, with, with, with a, if, if they don't, I will cut off my balls and send them to you in Scotland. So uh, the amount of things that were lost with the, the end of the Cultural Revolution and the death of Mao, um, rural communities that did have access to universal health care no longer have access to health care. Um, they don't have access the, to health care at all? Are well, you sure about that? Well, not at all, not at all. Um, Chungus, Chungus, to be clear. Generally, so Chungus, Chungus, to be clear. Hold on, Chungus, Chungus. Oh, I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear. You are saying that at the end of the Cultural Revolution, the majority of the Chinese people had a better standard of living than they do now. I'm not necessarily saying. Obviously, China has developed to an extent that has afforded a better quality of living to an extent, is what I'm trying to say. But what I'm also pointing out. What do you mean to an extent, dude? It is. Listen, listen. What do you mean to an extent, dude? When people talk well, about when people when people try to claim to hold on, you I realize you realize when people like Steven Pinker are talking about oh global poverty has been reduced they're almost exclusively referring to China what do you mean to an extent China's success in being able to eliminate poverty and and, and raise the standard of living of its people I mean it's it's so legendary even mythical it's untold in the history of humanity it's there is there has never been a country that has so rapidly improved the standard of living of its population as China there's, you can't even, there's nothing, nothing compares to it. And you're saying that's just to an extent. You are seriously so delusional in your Marxist, Leninist, Maoist cult that you're trying to say that at the end of the Cultural Revolution, the if Chinese people had a better standard of living than they do now? What are you talking about, dude? I mean, even even the fucking cult left deviationists and ultra leftists of the Cultural Revolution, if you resurrected their corpse and asked them that question now, they would go in China and be like, that's fucking stupid. Obviously, people live better than they do now. But, you know, if you were smart, maybe you would make the argument that, well, Haas, that development would have been inevitable. And if they continued under the Mao model, it would have, been, it would have even been better than now. But to say something so stupid that the standard of living of the Chinese people hasn't improved in the past 10, 20 years, let alone since the end of the Cultural Revolution. I guess dude, you are living in a fantasy probably, land. You are like, you are so delusional. Right you, are beyond, you are beyond what the, like, I was, the, the point that I was trying to get to was that the Chinese people had, had lost so many quintessential things that were, that were key to building socialism with the death of Mao and the, what came after the thing. Okay, um, so the key word and, is building your version of socialism. The key word is not, as far as their own well-being and development is concerned, by any metric. It's your ideological project, as you've defined it and you've qualified it. It has nothing to do with their happiness and well-being and their standards. So of are you trying to say that what was once universal health care, which has now been replaced by a private, albeit there is still national insurance, I guess... It's um, not really private at all. It's, it's not really private. That's a really misleading way of characterizing China's healthcare system. Because, if, for example, there, the insurance, there's like no insurance industry in China that, you know, 
it's even comparable to America. I mean, I don't even think there is one. The, the medical industry is clearly set up and as a system was created to serve the purpose of improving people's medical well-being, not profit. Even if profit is used as a measurement, which it also was under Mao, by the way, not a lot of people know this, but all Deng really did was decentralize the people's commune system, which was operating using profit as a measurement, and they did act autonomously from the national central economy. They did use profit as the indication of whether they were efficient or not, and all Deng really did is decentralize that system down to the team level of, of farm all he did was implement a coup, my friend. He literally yeah. betrayed socialism in China and sure. what dragged it to, to this capitalist imperial. Well, system that's that's a highly you can try and argue. Hold on, that that's that's a highly ideological. Hold on, that's still, a highly still that, imperialism. Chung is that is character that Lenin defined. Okay, well, I'm saying it's not imperialist, and you haven't really made an argument. I, I've re all the points you've brought up are untenable, unless you want to say those are tenable. So I guess we could also just move on to the other point that was brought up. Hold on, so wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not going to move on to another point until we come to a conclusion about whether what you said was tenable or not. Are the things that you've said tenable, sustainable? You've been making neoliberal arguments in the entire about well, okay, you're trying to hold on, just, Chungus, Chungus, just to be clear. So remember, economy. remember when Mao said, "Seek truth from facts." So before you characterize my arguments ideologically, we have to actually debate about whether I'm right or you're wrong, or you're right and I'm wrong. So we have to come to a conclusion about this one point before I move on to any other point for you. I was waiting for you to finish. Yeah, so you made a lot of claims about China and Africa and China internally and China in relation to the globe. You said it was imperialist. You said it was capitalist. And you didn't really respond to anything I said. So, our, I mean, where, where do we stand here? Considering the fact that you've been making neoliberal arguments for okay, your justification so what, of imperialism. So two things, two things. What neoliberal arguments have I made? Second of all, even hypothetically, if I did make neoliberal arguments, why are they false and wrong? You're excusing imperialism because you're seeing it as a benefit of development, regardless okay. of what that development no, comes I am. Of. I am at the very least proving that it is not imperialism, or if it is imperialism, but you've not it is... proved anything to say it's not imperialism. All okay, you've done I, is I, I did though because I did though because imperialism is defined by the export of capital and more specifically the export of finance capital. And it's also a specific stage of monopoly capitalism. Lenin described a hundred years ago, right? In which countries were basically um, not simply just exporting capital, but also the new role of banks and financial capital and actually turning industrial capital into a middleman. So clearly that does not reflect China's economic system internally or abroad, because in the Chinese system, somehow some development, some, some goal of development, however you want to define that of, increasing and uh, developing the forces of production is what's in command, not profit whatsoever. If profits are not even in command, I don't even know how you could say it's it's imperialist. I mean, that's that's a very big prerequisite of imperialism is that profits so, are in command. This is what you're already doing is you're, you're just assuming the fact that profits aren't in command. Okay. When when we've already discussed the fact about mining rights and you've you've somehow justified mining rights, it's like, Hold oh on. yeah. All right, all right, right. Right. So, so we need to go the through, country. and this is a point of contention. How are profits in command? I've literally just just said it, mate. Like when you say say it again. I must have not been able to hear you because you sound like you have a cock in your mouth. Go ahead, say it again. <laughs> so what I was saying was, you say that profits not in command, yes. despite the fact again when China's sending these loans over to, or rather, sorry, you like to put it as development. And yeah. China is developing these third world countries. Yeah. Um, but they're doing this all off out of the good of their own hearts. And then there's nothing. No, they're, they're doing it in about. exchange. They're doing it in exchange for. This is it, has. You're getting to okay. the point. That's imperialism. When wait, 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 we're, we're not talking about that yet. We're talking about profits and command. So is China doing this for profit or is China doing this to satisfy both its developmental needs and the developmental needs of other countries, which it's somehow trying to establish a common interest between? Is it about developmental needs or is it about, is it about profit? You're, you're acting as if those two things are mutually exclusive and they can't be intertwined. Okay, uh, wh which one is in command? When, when which, one is, which one is in command such that one would be sacrificed for the other if it came down to it? Again, so you, you also seem to think that profit isn't primary at all in China. When, when you look at big companies no. like fucking Tencent and the Evergrande, with companies billionaires which began at a loss. Studios, Companies not only which began at a loss, but you, like, how, are, how are loss, profits in command whatsoever? When it's the anti-materialist, okay. look at them now. Th there's, there's, like, there's like millions of arguments 
bombarding us. Now you're saying it's anti-imperialist. Can we just focus on why profits are? You in were demand? talking about the profit motive, though. I mean, even in imperialism, in Chinese imperialism, the, the profit the, motive listen, exists. Listen, the, the profit, the profit, the profit motive. The, 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 fuck it exists. The, the profit motive. Hold on, you just the, see you talking about the profit motive is like what you just critiqued about someone talking about the middle class. The profit motive or the incentives of economic activity. That's a sociological question is not actually what's going to define mode of production because clearly the, the communist party the people in power in china are not motivated by any profit motive or the profit motive of some kind of ruling class that's such a dumb thing to say has honestly do you, you just don't understand thing? fucking materialism okay so when, when you have billionaires when you have billionaires at the helm do you really think their class interests are still aligned with the proletariat regardless wait, 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 wait. you just said something kind of funny you said that billionaires are at the helm can you explain how billionaires are at the helm in china how many billionaires are in the Chinese Communist Party right now, bro? Are there... Okay, how many more farmers? Just farmers alone. Forget about all the other classes. How many more farmers are there in the Chinese Communist Party compared to billionaires? That's, Do you know this stat? That's Do you know this? a dumb argument to make, man. Okay, Communist Party of China are, like, composition by class. Meeting, like, the, the Chinese system is so disconnected from the masses by this point that it's effectively commandism. Okay, that it comes from so the how many people people. are in the Chinese Communist Party? A tenth of the whole population, right? But you can try and say this. It doesn't doesn't mean that the class character of the billionaires within the Communist Party are still misaligned with the proletariat. Okay, how are they misaligned? Are you fucking serious right now? I'm, you, I'm you asking you. I'm asking are you, you serious? I'm you asking don't know you. how billionaires. If you know about oh, Marxism, you interest. should hold on. If you know about Marxism, you should be able to explain why they're misaligned. So actually, we'll we'll go over a good quote from Anarchism and Socialism by Stalin, of course, in the, the dialectical method. Okay. Um, he talks about basically an example where he gives a shoemaker. Here's a simple illustration. Let us take a shoemaker who owned a tiny workshop, but who, unable to withstand the competition of the big manufacturers, closed his workshop and took a, pay and took a job, say, at a shoe factory in Tiflis. He went to work at the factory, not with the view of becoming a permanent wage worker, but with the object of saving up some money of accumulating a little capital to enable him to reopen his workshop. As you see, the position of the shoemaker is already proletarian, but his consciousness is still non-proletarian. It is thoroughly petty bourgeois. In other words, this shoemaker has already lost his petty bourgeois position. It has gone, but his petty bourgeois consciousness has not yet gone. It has lagged behind his actual position. Clearly, here too, in socially, first the external conditions change, first the conditions of men change, and then their consciousness changes accordingly. So Stalin, Stalin's clearly, return. can you get to the part where it's relevant? Because Stalin's just talking about the primacy of material being over consciousness. So can you get this to the part where, exactly. where... When when the material reality yeah. for these billionaires is having excesses beyond their fucking wildest dreams, mm, where that's they not true. have more money than that's they could spend in a true. lifetime... That's not true. Being a billionaire, literally, okay. you could not... Can I ask you a question? Can, can billionaires oh, in China... Why are you defending huh. billionaires right now, you fucking weirdo? Yeah, yeah. Can you... Can, You're can, a Marxist. Can, yeah, can, can, I am I'm a Gucci Marxist. A Marxist. I, I'm a Gucci Marxist. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a Gucci Marxist. So I'm, I'm gonna. You're getting emotional. You're, not a Gucci Marxist. you're getting a little emotional. You're, 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 you're honestly a big fucking QAnon reaction. Why, why are you but... getting mad? Why are you getting mad? I, I have to explain it to you, right? Because it's very. This oh, no, is Chungus. Chungus. Listen to reason. Chungus. Listen. Hold on. Chungus. 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 Fucking Bigfoot man. Chungus, Chungus, you're getting so upset. You're like a little forest fairy. You're on your are you your period or something? Are you, you have a tantrum, I'm temper tantrum, upset. right? So your 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 tea, tea levels are very low tonight. That's okay. Maybe it's a full moon or something. But Chungus, this is also what you do. See, you're so insecure. Chungus, in yourself, Chungus, Chungus. No, no, I, I have to respond to your. I have to respond to your irrational. Chungus, Chungus, Chungus. I have to respond to your like irrational. Chungus, Chungus. I have to. I can't really respond to your emotional, moral indignation. I have to respond to the substance. So in substance, okay, when it comes to Chinese billionaires, there's a few things, okay? One, you just claim that someone's lifestyle and, and, and wealth is not enough to define them as a class. And now I'm also going to point out that so I'm going to actually ask you a question to see you if you know this. You honestly think that billionaires exist when they're not at the helm of a company? Or at least involved in the is, is that administrative? Is that administrative or is it their actual private property? You're honestly also defending private property rights right now. Like, I'm asking you, you, do, you do, do, okay, let, let me ask you a question. Do the billions of the billionaires belong to them in the sense of private property? Do they what? Chinese billionaires, do they actually own their own billions as their own private property? Whether or not they do, their interest is still not aligned to the proletariat, oh, regardless <laughs> how you What do you mean? Chungus, 
They cannot liquidate their assets. Their billions are in the form of the assets of the company. And everyone says this in China, the higher it's up you still go, their private property. you don't know that these billionaires are fully controlled by the party. They have no autonomy. They have no freedom. They don't own anything. They can't liquidate any of their so-called wealth. They are in an administrative position. That's Which they're not like in the Jack position Jack they are. Manages to buy his private jets everywhere and do this. And yeah, do they, they they enjoy you're they enjoy. Your two hats. Chungus, 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 Chungus. You sound you sound like an incel. You're you sound like an incel who's mad that people is, enjoy a higher standard of living. Why is this okay, is what Chungus, you do, Chungus? You're a fucking virgin that can't touch feel the touch of a woman. Chungus, 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 Chungus. The quality, Chungus, the quality of women that I have fucked is beyond your wildest dreams. So let's not go there, Chungus. I let me ask you a question. I highly doubt that you fucking struggle with a unga boonga. Wait, wait, wait. If I privately haunt, if I privately prove it to you, will you give me five thousand dollars? No, because if, if you're so I, disconnected I, from working if class, I, if, I, if, if, I like, if I like text, you. If, I, if I like text, I'm, if I, hold on, if I, if I text them, class. if I text them to confirm Wait, it, when we organized this stream, when we organized this stream, you told me I had 30 minutes to prepare while I was on a night shift. I told you I was working. And what did you say? I was scared. Mate, I gave you a date that I could have been on. I'm on tonight. You're so disconnected from the active realities of the working class. You sit all day on stream, jerking off, hoping that people will give you fucking Twitch donations. I've gotten because no you, donations. You have a fucking army I've gotten zero idiots. donations this whole stream. Hold on, Chungus. I have gotten I've got like one I've gotten one five dollar donation this whole stream. I've gotten like nothing. Okay? Chungus, but anyway. Do you have a job as? This is my job. This is your job. Hold on. Do we want to talk about billionaires? Do you you want to pivot to something else or do you want to actually debate? I, I, we we can talk about it. personal shit if you want hey, to. Your debatable tactics are fucking dumb. What you've done I, this entire time. I want to be rational. Chungus, Chungus, all I want to do is rational. Chungus turns it. Okay, Chungus, all I want to do is rationally break this shit down. I mean, you keep saying I have debate bro tactics and this and that. Why can't you just honestly um, have a point or bring an argument? What, what am I wrong about? What are my debate bro tactics? Why am I being dishonest? How am I being manipulated? Think just break it down the, for us. Think Go about ahead. the stream. In fact, just talk about your pseudo leftism. We'll talk about the stream that you put up what, a few days ago where you were talking about quote unquote the left being funded by billionaires. Like, again, this just totally goes against class analysis, you, you, you freak. Like, you see oh, things. So, you wait, Chungus, Chungus, Chungus. so you are you pivoting to another point now? Chungus, we have no, a few no, points that are this unresolved. Is, okay. No point in your character, mate. We we have a few points that are unresolved. We, oh, really Chungus, Chungus. You right now Chungus, we have a few points. Man. Chungus, Chungus. And someone needs to tell you. Chungus, we have a few points that remain. Sense of self worth. You seem to think you're all so important. Can you stop yelling? Your tank top and your tiny little muscles. Chungus, Chungus. Chungus. You always talk about how you try and you want to like, oh, say that to my face. Oh, fucking are are you it. drunk? Like, I saw you will. Yeah, you're a forest fairy and you're a little pussy. So Chungus, can, yeah, we, talk? I keep projecting, can we talk about the keep substance of the things. debate? We have a few unresolved claims, right? You said China was imperialist because of its activities in Africa. Then you said China is capitalist. And all you've done is defend imperialism and use neoliberal okay, can, Let's actually it. stick to the substance so we can go by this point by point. And if you want to talk about the left being funded by billionaires afterwards, I am very excited to get into that debate as well. But let's actually focus on where we're at first. Because we're not going to pivot to another topic until either one of us concedes on this one. So Chungus, you say that I have just defended imperialism. But the argument is about whether China is imperialist in the first place. Now, the question is, how can China be imperialist if profits are not in command? It's a very simple question. Profits are still in command. Why do okay. you think the rock But you Okay, then, then you made the argument. Just to simplify so we don't loop. Just, just so we don't loop. Just so we don't loop. You claim that profits have to be in command because China has billionaires also in the Communist Party. Then I told you that these billionaires don't have any property themselves, that they actually own themselves, they can't liquidate their assets, they don't have a property. And you still think that China's national bourgeoisie is somehow still aligned to the proletariat? Despite the fact they've done all they can to make sure it is, it is not a, it is it is it is I not it is not a national bourgeoisie. It, it is not a national bourgeoisie. It is not a national bourgeoisie. It is entirely. No. The national okay, it, does the bourgeoisie own, economy has a national bourgeoisie? Is, You've is, already admitted is, that is the bourgeoisie defined economy. by the accumulation of capital and private property? It's yes defined no? by the relations of production. It's defined by the fact that you have people in charge of privately owned corporations, whether okay. or not they're part state funded or not. That yeah, so that's the part I want to get to. How are they 
So you're saying they're privately owned, right? What there is, are, the, ex what is the extent the of that privacy? Every single company all right, is, is the extent... All right, owned. Chung is... It's not. So I, I'm going to explain to you something about China's system, right? When China talks about private property, the privacy aspect is not actually about um, property in the relevant sense for the bourgeoisie. It's just about a gap and a blind spot to the system of central state planning, which means they are not going to make assumptions about how to go about the form of economic growth. They're going to leave it to forces that are not immediately controlled by the state. You okay? genuinely believe in the people's billionaires. That's so fucking funny, man. Well, okay. That's, that's no, no, honestly I'm glad, a Since we're not on and Twitter you and you can't just have like these... Since we're not on Twitter and you can't just get away with like these snarky remarks and like LMAO stuff, why is it ridiculous for a socialist country to have billionaires? Can you rationally break that down? Other than the fact of we've already, that we've already talked about, where the only people that are billionaires exist within positions of private property and power. No, it's, it's hold on. Bourgeoisie. But I just proved to you that it is not private property in the relevant sense. But you of the haven't bourgeoisie. proved anything. Mate. Okay, you've just talked a lot of shit. So, like you so okay, street, can the bourgeoisie, if, 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 if it's Soros. private property, if if the billions sick. are their private property, can they liquidate their assets? What would happen to them? So, you're telling me that Jack Ma doesn't already have a massive disposable income that he can fall back on. What happened to Jack Ma, Chungus? What, what happened to Jack Ma? What happened to him? Well, he's still around, isn't he? He's back in the public eye now, isn't he? Why is he back in the public? Why wasn't he in the public eye? What did they do to him? What happened to him? Well, considering that nothing's ever been said about what happened to him, you're going to make a lot of assumptions. So, so, so that's a beautiful example, Jack Ma, Chungus. These billionaires have no autonomy. They're not allowed to assert any independence, even in opinion. All Jack Ma did was just say some things that were on his mind, and they bitch slapped him into submission like nothing. And he's still a How billionaire. Is, is he? Yes. Can he liquidate he his assets? He's still going about in his fucking... He's still got a massive disposable income. Okay, he does, okay so does the, does, 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 does the disposable... Class 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 you just objected to my use of the term middle class, and now you're saying the bourgeoisie is defined by disposable income? That's that's not that's not what I've said at all. This is your debate for streamers shit. You just put words in my mouth and say, oh, okay. this is what you're saying. But you oh, said he had a disposable well, income. Why is it relevant that he that's has a disposable income? That's not what I've said at all. Why is it relevant that he has a disposable income? I do as you're well. You're trying I... to make it out as if Jack Ma himself is like the average proletarian that's just trying to get by. No, I'm not. He enjoys... Hold on. Hold on. Just to be clear... China's billionaires enjoy a vastly better standard of living. Uh, they enjoy vastly more prestige and even more influence within China, okay, than the average person. But that's just like saying a party boss does or uh, some celebrity does. What specifically makes them an antagonistic class? Considering the fact that socialism has all but been overturned in China following the death of Mao because of these capitalist voters. We haven't qualified um, how that how socialism has gone whatsoever. Mate, I mean, why would I even begin to try and debate this with you when you seem to think that billionaires are somewhat synonymous with socialism? Like, this is wait, just wait, another wait, thing I, your on, on, can't comprehend. On, I did not say billionaires are synonymous with socialism. I merely said it is not incompatible for a country Stay to be socialist. The fuck, man. You, it's, it kind of seems like you're like hung up on the fact that according to your prejudices which have yet to be justified, that it sounds ridiculous. But you have to actually explain to us why it's ridiculous, not just that it sounds that way to you. If you actually knew the just basic fucking Marxism... Give us right? anything. Anything, us. Give us, give us anything. Give us anything. Give us anything. Well, anything. Give us anything. Give us anything showing that it's impossible. In and of itself, mate. Actually, you know, I would even make the case that this is something Marx predicted in his critique of the Gotha program when he said... That when the principle of equality prevails, that will actually lead to immense levels of inequality because for people to be given paid according oh, to their you're work. You're taking that quote highly out of distortion. You're highly. No, I think, I think doing it still makes sense though. I think, I think, I think it, it explains. No, in Critique of the Gotha program, what he was trying to say was that by giving every worker the same wage is not fair because if you take, say, one worker that works. As a single person that does say twelve hour days, just trying to feed themselves. That's not what he was saying. He's saying when it's based on the days, principle. He's saying socialism, which is based on the principle of from each uh, according to their ability and to each according to their ability, meaning they will get what they put in. That will lead to an immense level. He didn't say if everyone's getting equal wages. He's saying if everyone is that, getting the no, exact proportion. Finish, that isn't what I was going to say. That's what I was saying you were saying. No, so in critique of the Gotha program, two seconds, let me actually just get this point out. Go ahead. What he was saying was it's unfair to give everybody the same wage because if you take the example of a single person working a 12-hour day and say 
a, a single mum that has, say, six kids, for example, working that same 12-hour day, the wage that's given to one is not going to be we sufficient know. for the other. No, but right? yeah, yeah, I, I get the, I get the, I get the difference is extreme. But why is it qualitatively and essentially different? That inequality who will needs, prevail. In who needs to have that amount of money when there's already people in your country? They, in they China only, they, that are they only have, though. they only have think that. About, Chungus, think Chungus, Chungus, I have to explain something to you about economics. Chungus, I have to explain no, to you about something about economics. Chungus, Chungus, Chungus. So let me explain to you something, and you're gonna have to let me speak. And not cut me off. You have to listen very closely, okay? When it comes to them being called billionaires, that is because of the sum total of the assets of the company, which is like completely controlled by the party, okay? The second thing is that the amount of disposable income that defines the extravagant nature of their lifestyles is negligible compared to the national economy, which means the, it only seems extreme to you because of the disproportion compared to the average person, what they can enjoy. But in terms of what they're taking from the national economy to live these exorbitant lifestyles, it's nothing. It's a drop in the pond. You sound like I these would... dumb. You sound like these liberals who say that if we just tax more yachts and more mansions, oh, we'll God, be able to fund state programs. That's not what I'm saying. Which is not these, true. These yachts, the difference in mansions, lifestyle. Hold on, Chungus, Chungus, Chungus. The difference in things. lifestyle. The difference in lifestyle does not correspond to the ultimate source of difference, which lies in differences in development. Differences in lifestyle are completely negligible at the level of the national economy. It, that's just like some extra shit you can enjoy. So, Here's a cherry on top. One thing that one thing that you guys always point out when you when talking about China is you always say that China's lifted, you know, nine hundred million people out of poverty or X, Y, and Z, which obviously is a good statistic to look at. But what you're talking about there is not relative poverty, it's absolute poverty. There's people in China that are still they might be earning more than two dollars a day, perfect. But that's okay. still they're still living in poverty. Has China stopped and, developing? No, no, but that's not to say that okay. the, the wages so China's of those still, workers so the, will so the also question increase. is, what kind of job has China done so far? It's not done yet. But what kind of job has China done so far? It's a, it's done a job that is better than any country in the history of humanity in terms of development. Neoliberal arguments. There is, no, it's not a neoliberal argument because India hasn't done the job that China has. None of the liberal countries have done the job that China has. Britain never did the job that China has. There is not a single example in the history of mankind of such a rapid and efficient and successful alleviation of human beings from poverty and it is precisely because China is not a neoliberal system, You're literally but a socialist system. You're a better system of capitalism than the EU or fucking America or this or that. Like, it, it, this uh, is uh, what uh, I mean. Uh, You're a pseudo uh, leftist. The EU, like, getting, the EU. You, you are violently defending a capitalist system. And for what? The You're EU, to be hold on. Communist. The EU and America, they cannot develop themselves. They're, they've literally hit a wall. All they can do is devastate the economies and underdeveloped people around the, the world. Those countries are, are there. I mean, look at look at what's going on right now with inflation. They're they're literally systems that are about to implode and collapse. You can't say that for China. They can't sustain internal development, which is why they have to rely purely on finance capital for these political systems to maintain themselves. They have to become empires, which go and fuck up other countries to retain the veneer of a purely credit based fake bubble economy, which is about to pop right now. How could you say that China is just a different version of that? I, I, I mean, it's just fucking ridiculous. It's still a capitalist system, mate. I don't know how you're not seeing okay, this. You're okay, honestly okay, okay, okay. fucking so, delusional. So, the fact but, that it's still, on, you have to at least admit, Chungus, that every, every single example... The fact, the fact that for okay. the majority of Chinese people, they will never be in a position where they can own their own means of production... They do. And you're sitting there like, oh, yeah. They, the well, Chinese you know, people own all the land oh, within China. Them, but they're this, they're that. You're Hold on, Chungus, 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 China's home ownership rates. Hold on. You're talking the about productive forces. Chungus, you are so, you're Honest living in Scotland. You're a Stop fucking Anglo. Hold on. You're this Anglo guy living in Scotland who is so profoundly ignorant of China's economy. China's economy has Here's always based. Out. China's Here's economy. China's economy. Oh, you're a Scottish guy, you Brit bogger. China's Aye. economy has always been based on small ownership of the means of production by the people. Even during the sweatshops, people had farmland back home that, for all intents and purposes, they actually owned. And you now that's the sweatshops, they still exist. The people suicide debts by you, you Look, that's a human. That's a cultural issue. Whatever. You're not talking about the meat and potatoes of motor production. They own their means of production. That's they a own, cultural issue. They own they, their they, own they, means they, of production. No, no, that's anti-materialist. This is a cultural issue. These, yes, suicide is a cultural issue. Yes, mass suicide is a cultural issue. Suicide rate is because they are getting fucking shot by suicide. Mass, 
They're not able to afford their standard of living, mate. They can't afford to eat. They yes, don't know where they the next can afford to eat. They the can. Chinese so that's people, why they're working in sweatshops or The Chinese people, save for the famines during the Great Leap Forward, have pretty much always this... been able to afford the minimum of subsistence. So yes, they can afford to eat. Everything they were doing in those sweatshop factories was in excess of a very you're, baseline. You're it was a game. They still exist, guys. Chungus. They don't. They don't nearly exist in the way that they did before and they're, they're cracking down on those that shit labor protections are increasing rapidly in china but what i'm trying to tell you chungus is that that baseline minimum of subsistence is what mao achieved everything the chinese Wait, people the thing have... is actually no coming back to what you said there just about chinese culture and the fact that the suicide sets tie into chinese culture like yeah. that is still an anti-materialist argument because no, you're it's totally not. negating the no it's well, you, not you are you're negating the relationship between the base and the superstructure the yeah, private it's, mode of it's, production it's a cultural the ideology effect. of the society Hold on. I didn't no, fucking no, say no, it's from you, ancient you Chinese culture. Chungus, shut, shut your oh, fucking oh, mouth. Shut your fucking mouth. I says you, you big fucking Trump. You bitch, like, you are a bitch, you are it's my bitch. You are my bitch it. specifically. Wait, you live in fucking you Scotland. You You're a little bitch first. and you're you my bitch specifically. Just I have to mute it. I have to mute it. You won't shut the fuck up. How many holes does a woman have, has? You fucking he wife. won't shut the fuck up, you goddamn cocksucker bitch. You gonna let me speak <laughs> ah, or not? He, the reactionary. he says doesn't shut up. He doesn't shut the fuck Triple up. Parentheses. He doesn't shut the oh, fuck I'm up. Mark, so tell oh, us, I have to mute him. I have to mute him. I have to mute him. Are you gonna shut up? Are you gonna shut up? Are you gonna shut up? Okay, I did not say it's Chinese culture and that's like an ancient thing, suicide. Obviously, it's related to the economic changes that had happened at the time. And yeah, uh, socialism does not immediately... Hold on, shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! You're a fucking idiot! Shut the fuck up! You've got... I'm gonna fucking say a slur so bad. So I muted this dumb little bitch temporarily just to get this point across. You're muted, by the way, so if you're talking, it's in vain. Okay? Obviously, there are problems that come with modernization, all the alienation, all that kind of stuff. Socialism does not automatically solve all that shit. So when you're saying that China's capitalist because people are committing suicide at Foxconn, which by the way is a Taiwanese company, and, and you know, at, at sweatshop people are being miserable and shit, that is not an indictment on the socialist system. That might be an indictment on your personal, emotional, and ideological reasons for wanting to be a socialist, because you probably became a socialist for emotional reasons. You're like, oh, there's so much misery and unhappiness, that's why I'm a socialist. But that is not a scientific analysis of whether China's socialist or not. The fact that people are unhappy at periods of Chinese history is not an indictment on the, on the um, socialist system, period, okay? It's an indictment on the motivations you have, which are emotional and ideological in nature, for qualifying what you think socialism's significance is. You think socialism is about making sure that everyone, uh, is, 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 all the problems of, of mental illness and depression and suicide is immediately solved. Scientifically, socialism is about developing the forces of production in a way where social social reasons are in command not profit okay so it's very simple there you go i'm unmuting i'm unmuting you you can't you can't shut your fucking mouth like an adult so you're this drunk scottish dumb fuck who can't just shut their fucking mouth for a second and listen to reason by the way guys this is a prime example of Haas going angry. I am not an irrational person. I don't randomly blow up and get angry at people until they start soying out and flailing their arms everywhere and just shouting, They just start calling me names and they're not listening to reason. They're not, they're not being rational. I'm trying to have a rational debate with you about this. So if you can calm down and calm your tits and calm your gynecomastia and, and take your tampon out, whatever the fuck you have to do, be a fucking man and actually debate about this. There you go, I'm unmuting you. I, I love the fact that you're talking about how I got you angry because of, of my little outburst there. Because when you don't, cause you, cause you have a, these emotional outbursts. Because you have these emotional entire, outbursts, you can't control yourself. You are an emotional, you ideological woman. You and are you an overly emotional, off, ideological you woman. You the microphone because it's all you fall back on the second you realize hey, you're Chungus, fucking Chungus, can you respond to the substance of the argument? I don't want to talk about all this other shit. I just want the to The only thing I'm going to respond to is my criticism of you single-handedly driving up the fucking price of magic mushrooms around this world because you're fucking eating them all, mate. You're eating them all. But you have yet to prove that argumentatively. You see the problem? <laughs> mate, fucking, I'm not going to sit here you and have to. You have yet to back that up with any substance. I'm trying oh, to actually honest, work with God. you. I'm trying to respond to the you were you homeschooled made. by eight okay chungus chungus wannabe chungus i am trying you know to respond i'm just gonna end on this my friend you know i just want someone to sincerely tell okay. you that you're honestly 
possibly the, the the biggest hindrance to the left you can possibly okay Chungus, are you to, are you conceding the debate right now i'm not conceding shit so the only reason we had we had multiple we have had multiple we have multiple lines of contention say has is you're so insecure that this guy this nobody from twitter who's been bullying you for the past two weeks you've invited onto the stream and no me, what, i will two, debate two anyway. hours, Chungus, two are you conceding the debate you can are you it. are you conceding the actual debate? Just because I fucking called you a dumbass for the past two weeks. You okay, do you, do you actually want to continue the debate? You know do you want to continue the debate about imperialism, socialism, and capitalism in China? Or do you want to keep talking about this? I just want to tell you, I'm a fucking pansy, man. And I okay, sincerely okay, but, but hold on. wish you, you, you haven't worse. You haven't backed that up with, with showing... Chungus, Chungus, I have... I have Chungus, you um, haven't responded to any on. of my arguments. What a pussy! He would never shut the fuck up on Twitter about how I'm a, such a fucking dumbass, and I gave him multiple opportunities just to sort this out through debate. He kept saying I'm a fucking dumbass, he kept saying I'm a fucking idiot who doesn't know anything about Marxism, I'm the most stupid fucking guy on earth, and then he came here with the premise that I don't understand Marxism whatsoever, and he also was insulting me nonstop. I kept my cool and I kept my patience. All I wanted to do was debate about the fucking substance, and this little fucking pussy, this little bitch, could do nothing but fucking run away. I was very charitable with that person. I even was doing things like giving them arguments and, and giving them devil's advocates that help them and help their case. Dude, he could not come here and actually defend any of his points. And by the way, guys, if formally and officially, he conceded at the very least that the first point of contention he wanted to bring to me was wrong. So, guys, this is what I'm telling you, the inf every, oh, the whole audience, right? Do you remember when he admitted that he... Okay, he's back. He's back. Hey, you're back, right? You here to debate? You're still molding. You're still molding me. Okay, are you here to debate now? So, uh, you, you already conceded to me that you were wrong about one thing, but the I've other... I've not conceded shit. Yes, you did. I've not we have a clip. We have a clip. We, so we have the clip. I've honestly got you this worked up. You're we have the clip. The Chungus, I'm, I'm calm. Okay, oh, I'm okay, okay. okay. Let's, let's honestly, meditate. Let's you meditate. Take a few deep breaths. Fucking humble. Okay, Chungus, Chungus. And you know what, man? Few deep uh, breaths. Few deep breaths. Few deep breaths. I'm calm. Sort your life out, dude. Do you want to debate? Do you want to debate? Get a real job. Sort your life out. Stop talking about how everyone else is disconnected from the masses, that you're going to lead the revolution, that you're this, you're that. I, I didn't say yeah, any of those things. Chungus, one, 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 Chungus, one, one dumb fuck claim at a time. Let's do one dumb fuck claim at a time. You ran away. I said, let's do one dumb fuck claim at a time. We can go, with, go through everything he wants to go through. One thing at a time, he just fucking ran away. What do you want me to do? I, I tried to be calm. I tried to calm down. I want to have a debate as a man, whatever you want, if, if this was a they, them, or a woman, whatever, it doesn't matter what you are. But as an adult, a mature adult, let's just talk about the substance. Why is China capitalist? Why is it imperialist? So unfortunately for Chungus, so I mean, let me break down the debate for you. Chungus came here and said that I want to prove you're a dumb fuck who doesn't understand anything about Marxism. So the first point he used was something about what Lenin said about ancient Rome. He actually ended up conceding to me that he was wrong to try and contest me about that. And that one point actually does not mean I'm a dumbass. Then he tried to bring up that China was imperialist and he started to get emotional and actually didn't, he started constantly pivoting to, you know, first we talked about Liberia and a Kenyan port in Africa. Then he decided to shift it over to China and talk about, you know, suicide, all this stuff and billionaires and their exorbitant lifestyles and private jets and stuff. And I was happy to respond when I could get a word in to each and every one of those claims. Keep in mind, I responded to everything and I systematically dismantled his position where he actually gave me one. And it got to a point where he became so frustrated that he started soying out and getting extremely emotional and just vomiting out this incomprehensible Scottish diarrhea barrage of insults that are morally charged and morally based, he wouldn't shut up, so I did lose my temper for a little bit. And then I muted him, and I just got my point in, and then I unmuted him to give him an opportunity to respond. Now, all he did is make a bunch of unsubstantiated claims like, I'm smoking mushrooms, and I'm crazy, and I'm stupid, and all these kind of things. Well, we're that's what the debate was supposed to prove. You, you threw in the towel when it actually came to the debate about the relevant points of contention. Keep in mind, I don't cut people off. I don't just yell at people. I give people an opportunity to prove themselves. And look, I did that with the Asatar Bear debate. I've done that with every single Twitter space, anything you name it. I let these people make their case. I let them try and argue what they want to argue. None of these people can stand a chance. I mean, this is why they won't debate me. I've offered these people thousands of dollars if they can just beat me in a debate. Thousands of dollars. He, he brought up a bunch of other shit, like I want to be the leader of the left. And he also, I really, really wanted to bring up the thing about billionaires funding the left. I really wanted to get into that that stuff unfortunately he bitched out before we could do that but i mean yeah this is this is uh, an extremely sad l
on, on Chungus's part. I mean, this is just, it, this was peanuts, right? But, you know, I'm, I'm, the only thing I regret is that I didn't get him to completely admit that he was wrong about the original claim as a whole. But I am glad, and this is what I want to tell you, the chat, right? I want you guys to get the clip of him conceding that yes, he was wrong about ancient Rome and Lenin imperialism, and I was right about that. And make it a clip that's less than two minutes. And I want you to hear mods, everyone hear this. I want someone to do this. And every time you see Chungus on Twitter, or just go into his replies, spam him with that video of him conceding yes. So that's the fate of Chungus. We are never gonna let this go. We're always gonna bring it up to him that he conceded to me, and he's my bitch, he's my personal bitch from Scotland. I have a new personal bitch, guys. It's a guy from Scotland, right? So... That's eternal. That's forever.